Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Allison Cruz, and simply put, I'd like to welcome you to the end of Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Our adventure takes us to the colorful and stylish edges of the universe where it's an extremely popular destination for those seeking to throw away their televisions like that Red Hot Chili Pepper song told them to do and also to get back alley uh, psychological diagnoses which is great because the drugs they give you are pretty friggin fantastic and they take us to the space of wonder which in all honesty it's probably one of my least favorite stages in the entire game and an unfortunate sort of setup to the otherwise pretty great finale. In all honesty, I like the boss battle. The end of Kirby games are usually fantastic, but not when you have to deal with a whimsical warp space. You get anywhere near the facility of these dudes' pie holes and you go out their waste hole. So you really kind of want to stay away from their mouths, if anything. So we will avoid any transgressions and be forcibly sent back to wherever that is. We have three different types of warp spaces here, which as far as I know, there is no discernible difference between green, red, and teal. I guess that would be teal, maybe blue, but this one has more eyes, so I guess that makes it kind of creepy. But so long as we don't get anywhere near it, we'll be fine. Also, uh, spear katas make the return. I don't know what the point of them being here is, but they like to hurt us, so I don't appreciate that. Now, the overall aesthetic of this place, I'm just not a big fan of. The music is weird, and only when it kicks up is it good. In the background, we have Van Gogh's nightmare. He is crying in his sleep. And if there's anywhere, he's crying in his sleep. What in the world? Um, if there's anything that I can really say about this, is that if you have a Kirby Amiibo, this would be the best place to use it. And in all honesty, I, I had read about what the amiibos did, but I didn't realize that if you die with the amiibo activated, you can't use it for an entire other day. I thought it was just like you could use it for one stage even if you died and whatnot, but no, it's not entirely the case. You just have to wait or adjust the time on your Wii U to use it again. It's kind of silly, but uh, anyways, these are called shieldsters. They uh, do not die unless you destroy them completely, which will kind of go on about what that means later but for now let's just go ahead and try to grab as many of these stars as we can because I don't know something about this stage just kind of screams like a uh, half-baked you know it doesn't feel like it was fully fleshed out and otherwise it just feels like an overall miss so that might just be me but I do not enjoy this stage very much uh, especially when we have to deal with shield stirs so, hit them three times in the back and they're done. Boom. Just like that. And one of the reasons why I mentioned the Kirby Amiibo is the fact that you need to use your Star Dashes uh, to get one of the final, uh, I almost said trophies, treasures of the game. So, this one is also really annoying because getting sucked into doors is something you can do all too easily. So, I'll go slowly and just avoid that door and also spikes. That's a good idea, right? But yeah, the weird uh, music, this is like one of the few that I'm just like, Ugh, I don't want to listen to it. Uh, but we got to go this way um, and not go flying, creaming off in the other directions. Nope, grab it. And then I'll take the hit. No worries. Oof, that's creepy. And also a time room. So something that the game doesn't actually teach you until the end of the stage is the fact that these guys are afraid of star dashes, which is kind of amazing. Oof. Can I get that? Oh, I got all the stars. Nice. Um, you can just use a star dash to bypass them. You can even kind of see it here too, but I don't think it's like explicitly stated. But we don't have... Oh, we do have another star dash. Just barely. Um, no, I'm not going to waste it. We, we need to save as many as we can for the end. So chances are I will probably miss it. <laughs> There we go, good. Easily one of the hardest treasures to grab in my opinion. Now, it's at this point where we can now utilize their abilities to shit us out to our favor, which is always good. I, I always told my friends, you know, if you can find someone like that in your life, uh, someone worth keeping, you know? Yeah, great. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. This is the finale of the game. Oh, by the way, take a quick look at that. We get to now choose our fate, choose our adventure. Now this theme, I actually like, when it's nice and fast like that, but you don't hear it very much. And make sure to line up with the right one, hope you're not colorblind and playing a game called Rainbow Curse. <laughs> but there's our treasure, number two. 
Nice. And then we go back into the depressing music. Like, it's not depressing. It's just depressing how much I don't like it. Also, the gondola. It's always a nice little treat for us, isn't it? Okay, so whoop. There you go. Uh, so whatever you do, don't shoot yourself into the uh, shield of this guy. Because uh, it's going to hurt. So what we can do is actually do it while he's facing away. So we can destroy him and his backside. There we go. So Gondola returns and we don't really need to use it all that much here. All we have to worry about are these things. So yeah, something like that. Oh, oh, cool. And with that, we don't need it anymore. Bye. We can actually do this entire section as just regular Kirby and in all honesty, I feel like it's a little easier. Um, I do generally uh, think that even though that section is not that bad, uh, I still would prefer to do it as Kirby, so, whoop, so let's go this way, grab some of that, nice, slowly, gentle, gentle, how we make our way up, it could be just as easy with the gondola, but this is more fun, a little faster, is that it, I think that was, okay, well, let's go and uh, go up here and take our last gondola ride of this room at least, so, it's at this point where we're going to have to switch back and forth between the ropes and uh, hopefully not take the wrong path. It's really, really easy to figure out which way we need to go. It's just if you hit any of the warp stars, then you are going to be sent back to start. So, they're being mean. Gordo, get out of here. Lizzie McGuire <laughs> reboot didn't want you. Isn't that, wasn't that what his name was? Gordo? Something like that. I don't remember. Just Sarah was really excited about it, and then they backed out of the reboot because they wanted to make it like Disneyfied or something. Oh, what? How are we now going like sideways from being vertical two seconds ago? That's not good. Okay, well this is fast, and we just need to tank this hit with the Gordo, and then draw very carefully. So I will do something like that. Maybe something like this. There we go. Now, oof, oof. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then now we have the advent of the Gondola Berserk Bulb, who really can't do anything to stop us. He's going to keep going, and we're just going to kind of work our way over here while he falls to his death, and we reap the benefits of all of the stars. Don't do that, please. Okay, so this is where it's going to get tricky, and this is what you want all your star dashes for. All we need to do is head straight up, so I'm going to do it as carefully as I can because this is tight so let's see we did it first try perfect I was really worried about that so it begins raining stars for days and I don't like where they go because I don't want to miss them but I also don't want to get eaten before getting the treasure you know okay those two will have to be martyrs to the cause let's get out of here easily one of the most difficult treasures to grab just because of that small section you have such little room for error that if you lose your dash halfway through that you're done you saw where it ran out so and you can't like self-destruct and get out of here if you need but that's fine because any pent-up aggression you need to get out well it can all be settled here don't get eaten because Grinky is gonna kind of try to bait you into it so How's it going, my friend? A long time no see. Be nice to uh, knock together a couple skulls like the olden days and not get... Oh, jeez. So this is what happens when you get eaten. This is what happens when you let your friends buy your drugs for you. Okay. So he's going to be super annoying here now. He knows. He knows the deal. Uh, shoot. All right. Let's get some of that back. He's, he's actually, like, really obnoxious here. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go this way. Grab some pizza. Junk food can save us all. And right here, be very careful. Do not talk to that warp space. Not yet. Not until you've done all this stuff. So there's a button here. What does this do? Uh, it's not, oh, hey. Nice. A pyramid of stairs. There's also one more. So let's go up here. Yeah. This goop. What do you give me? Oh, nice. 50. Oof. Yeah, you definitely want that. And also, more reason to use your uh, star dash in the next room also. So I th think that's everything here before the last room. But yeah, th like this mix of the song is pretty good. I like it a lot. But yeah, looks like it's everything. All right, take me away. 
So if you remember, using the star dash will make the warp spaces, oh, sorry, warp space, it makes them scared. But the thing is, you don't actually even need to use it. All you have to do is not do it. There you go. Use that. And then also kind of not let yourself fall to your death. Oof. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Uh, well, we made it. We can get eaten to send our way back to do it the normal way. Uh, yeah. Watch out for that pit, too, that I was almost dumb enough to fall into. Yeah. So this, this part, pretty zip. Okay. Wow. Pretty simple, huh? Pretty simple, huh, Ellison? Jesus. All right, one more time. Go, go. With the better music. <laughs> Stay away from that. And I guess if you really want, get some of that. And there we go, we're set. Uh, I think that put us over what we needed to for this stage, so there we have it. Our final diary awaits. And I think we have enough stars. So let's do it and not mess her up. Six oh eight, baby. <sighs> but there we have it. That was the penultimate stage. Look at all these treasures. There's DDD in the Shieldster, the Warp Stars, trying to give us suggestive poses. Of course they would. But with everything having been collected up to this point, a new challenge is now open. Can you believe it? No, we have the final battle ready against Clacia herself, a word I have not yet uttered over the course of this project, except for maybe once. Or maybe it's Clacia. I don't know, because you think of, like, Marsha and the, the CIA. I don't know. Anyways, without further ado, the final battle. And this one is a doozy. Man, can't believe that after three short days, we've already made it to the end of the game. <laughs> But we continue forward with this pensive music playing, and we're in the universe's largest, slowest moving floor elevator that we've ever encountered. It's an unusually long preamble to the boss, especially because they still have to introduce a new mechanic in order to really get how we're going to defeat her. That's fine. Come up to this door, and we wait for it to open because, you know, they've been expecting us. They were reading that. And over here we have a ball with blue on it. Dash into it and it goes flying. We make him cry and now he's mad. He's so pissed that he is now horny and he wants to heat screw us. So what we need to do is use him and hit him in a very particular direction so that we can destroy the statue. And basically we need to aim him sort of like how we tried to do with our doppelganger Kirby. But this time you really have to just sort of influence it without him being spiky. To get him lined up, it's really annoying. You sort of just have to wait on luck and have good angles. But otherwise, just hit him and hope that you can uh, aim right. It's usually really nice about lining it up just right. It's just a matter of doing it, having the game uh, register. So with that, thank you. Third, fourth time's the charm. I don't know. If that's any precursor to how this fight's gonna go, I'm a little worried. But with that, Get out of here. Come on, Kirby. You can break out of that. Yes, you can. With that, Klaisha and her dear friends, the Grab Hands, have appeared to come and beat us up because they're under the impression we stole their lunch money. And of course, we did no such thing because, as we all know, hot school lunches are absolutely disgusting. And if you think charging a child a dollar fifty for a bag of milk is a good business investment, well then, I think not. <laughs> so what we need to do, of course, is wait for her friends to no longer be angry at us and then launch them back at her so she can be vulnerable, at which point we can now dash into her like crazy. Come on, Curbs, you can do it. 
and this is going to be an extremely long fight because after every phase uh, she's gonna send off some uh, non drawable spaces but you can still kind of hang out above it probably just wouldn't be a good idea here so you basically just wait and guard yourself from these lasers and to the best of my oof best of my abilities I am going to try to not sustain any damage for this so that we can do some uh, challenges later where I don't need to do this fight without taking a hit again so now she's gonna send off more of her horny spiky friends to come and uh, you know steal our lunch money the only reason why we have that is so that we might be able to get a, a bowl of rice or something <laughs> but it does make it a little bit easier to hit in case you're slightly off on the first one so yeah she is not taking much damage at all but eventually she is gonna start dropping stars and that is the bulk of what we're gonna be doing the most damage with so we now have clay shotsos that are gonna go and make life annoying for us so we're just gonna get rid of all of these bombs which is going to be uh, really important for the second half of this fight also make sure we grab all this before it disappears and we'll be well on our way to doing this so yeah it's kind of a cookie cutter boss fight if you ask me but I do really like Klesia, Klesia's design? I, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people pronounce it Klesia, but that seems wrong. I think we already talked about the logistics of that. Also, I'm going to miss every single one of these, aren't I? No, that was a, a pity redirect. All right, go curbs. There we go. Well done. Well done. Okay, so after the third one, uh, she is also going to drop even more stars this time around, too. Oh no, she's gonna do this. Oh shoot, okay, so avoid whatever you do, avoid the splishy splashy clay because it will uh, punch you. And that's not a good time. But lots of money to be found, and by money I mean stars. So we'll be as greedy as we can. Come on, dude. <laughs> oh man. And there we go. We are now basically set to getting uh, everything we need to do the final hit on her. But now we have so many more lasers to worry about. And luckily these lasers don't burn through us. So, yeah, there we go. That could actually be tricky if you're not doing the long lines. But, uh, yeah, one more volley to go, as you do in Nintendo games. Okay, all right. This one's gonna take a second, though. Please don't hurt me. Thank you. Oh my god, she just kept sending them. All right, well, here we go. Start Ash. As one could come to expect at the end of a Kirby game, it is one final entity that we need to come together and destroy as Rocket Kirby. And he comes in the form of the evil Dark Crafter, the one who, no pun intended, drew Klaatia to committing all of these heinous acts of uh, monochromicity. <laughs> That's even a word. But the idea here is to collect as many stars as you possibly can while avoiding these bombs because you need to use your super special chocolatey fudge coated super silver bullet on him in order to destroy him and this is easily the most difficult fight of them all so you can draw a line through the things and you can also use your silver bullet uh, while he's shooting off all of those uh, bombs but I would not advise against it because it's tricky and I'm still trying to do this without getting hit so 
here. Careful. Um, I do think this fight is pretty scripted, so you can anticipate and learn and get good at the fight because he does it every time. And, oh, I thought I got hit there. That was amazing. All right, well done, Kirby. We have one more volley to go. That one is actually kind of annoying, but not as bad as this one. So I might actually end up just trying to save myself and getting out of the, oh my God. Incredible amount of fire and maybe not get too cocky. That would not be good. All right, you got this, Kirby. You got this. You just gotta weave. And now we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. And yeah, these circular ones are actually not that bad either. Uh, definitely a test of your skill. If you were never good with the rocket, this might prove to be a little challenging, but we kind of make it a little bit easy on you here. And I do think they drop, oof. Some, some health. Okay, here we go. One last one, he's gonna do it in duos now. And then trios, which I'm not a fan of. Oh my God, look at this. Jesus, dude. Oh my God, I don't remember being that bad. Okay, we made it. Dark Crafter, you're done. With that, we conclude our time here in Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Thank you all once again for tuning in for this incredibly short, but in my opinion, fantastic little game that's well worthy of a lazy weekend, if anything. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I honestly didn't think that I would have ever ended up recording this, seeing as how chronologically Dreamland 3 was up next on the docket, and the last Kirby game I actually ended up recording for the channel was Planet Robobot way back in 2016. It's insane. Um, but I do want to say, after all this, I still really adore the game. The visuals and the music especially are top notch. And uh, I guess, although the visual stylized element never ends up being utilized more, and you have three bosses recycled twice each, and you don't get copy abilities in this one like you did in Canvas Curse, and Overall, the simplicity of the game is a little off-putting and lacks a lot of what people think of in a traditional Kirby spin-off. Well, I guess when I put it that way, it doesn't sound so great. Um, I still think there are enough positive merits to have warranted this playthrough, particularly in this day and age. Now, in the interest of full transparency, off-screen I did practice through quite a few of the challenges, and to absolutely nobody else's surprise, while they aren't particularly difficult, they are really time consuming to the point that I think our one bonus episode might end up being more like a full feature length event. We'll see though, because I think I need a break. My wrist has actually been hurting a lot more these past couple days recording this. It probably doesn't help that I've been on ultra overdrive recording Rocksmith customs lately too. You know, making upwards of a dozen videos every few days. It's kind of rough and unhealthy, but man, this medley is so good. I feel sort of terrible talking over it. And the shreddy guitar parts especially. But I do have some idea of what I want to do next, and I'm thinking we should play some shorter games like this for a little while. I already recorded Carry On and Man Eater while editing the monstrosity of a project God of War has been, and let me tell you, I really dig the way that series has turned out. It might just be recency bias, but I honestly believe that might be one of my best projects yet. So if for whatever reason you really like the sound of my voice, then uh, check it out, I won't stop you. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, as we wind down, I just wanna thank everyone again who's been sticking around and joining me. We're heading into my 12th consecutive year 
of making these kinds of walkthrough videos and it kind of blows my mind uh, I'm still doing these straight through the entirety of my 20s <laughs> I had a dream the other night that I had like early onset dementia and when the doctors found out about the trove of videos I have talking about video games in my life uh, they had me go watch through them to help me sort of get things back on track mentally which is kind of a scary thought to have you know subconsciously in my sleep because otherwise I feel like I have a pretty damn good memory. <laughs> but as we reach the end, ladies and gentlemen, bays and thems, I'm Allison Cruz, and in the name of Wada himself, I wish you all well, and I'll see you next time.